Old school cool, day nine. This is one of the most difficult sets of lights I ever made. They're vintage lights from the 1960s or 70s maybe. Genuine new old stock that came with the boxes and even the retail pricing stickers. In order to get a high powered light engine into a vintage or antique host, what you have to do is make a new flashlight that slips into the vintage host and mates with the irregular curves as fluidly as possible. The first difficulty arises because of how the switch works. The short explanation is that if any metal from the light engine contacts the host body, the engine will become connected to the batteries and the light will remain on at all times regardless of the switch position. Aww. For a detailed explanation of why that is, check out the linked video. One solution is to build the light engine from aluminum and then sleeve the entire thing in a non-conductive uh, material like a acetyl. Then you can just poke a small hole in the acetyl for the contact strip from the switch to deliver power to the light engine. The switch will then work powering the light on and off as intended. Unfortunately, this would mean very little heat is transferred from the light engine to the body of the flashlight. All of the heat is then trapped inside the light engine. That piece of metal can dissipate a little heat on its own, but probably only enough to run the engine at like 1 to 200 lumens output long term. What I prefer to do instead is electrically isolate the driver. I build the upper portion of the light engine so it mates with the head and body of the host to transfer heat away from the LED. The driver is isolated from the top portion of the engine by a layer of high temp plastic. The lower portion of the light engine where the battery is housed makes direct contact with the driver to absorb whatever heat it produces. Then I just need to make sure the lower portion doesn't make any contact with the flashlight body. This results in heat transfer at the head end for the LED, which means I can run the light engine at just under 700 lumens pretty much indefinitely. However, that by itself doesn't solve the switch problem. In order to make the driver contact the strip of metal coming off the switch, I poked a piece of brass through the acetyl and ran it up the side of the light engine. A ring holds that in place and ensures that if the light engine spins inside the body, it still makes electrical contact with the switch. And right now you're probably thinking, that doesn't seem that hard. And you're right, because I've already figured it out and I just told you. <laughs> Seriously though, it isn't that hard for me now that I already figured it out. Uh, it just takes a lot more time versus building a traditional light engine. The other thing that introduced complexity into this build was the customer wanted to take the light engine from the 2D EverReady and put it into the 2D Rayovac. Basically have interchangeable light engines between the brands. Same thing for the C-Cell lights. And set him down in there. If you want to see how I got that to work, I'm going to release some footage from an instructional video I made back when these lights were first built. First Maglite 2D, then Rayovac 2D. Even though the C and D have different reflectors, the beams are pretty similar. The D has a tighter hot spot, giving it a slight range advantage. The Rayovac 2D. Then 
now the ever ready to see. On the left, we see the D cell has a narrower beam with fairly crisp edges, where the C cell is wider and has a softer cloud like beam edge. Out of the two sets, I prefer the Rayovax because of the switch style. They have a three position switch plus a momentary button. Back all the way is off. One click enables the momentary button and all the way forward is locked on. I program the drivers to be two mode, low and high, and it's plenty easy to switch between them. The Everready seem like they're well enough made for a stamped metal body, but I don't like the switches on these. The momentary button is in the middle of the switch, and you have to press that down in order to be able to slide the switch forward into the on position. 